Welcome to Casual Chat Live. I am Brian Germain, and uh, if you're wondering why I've got a visitor sticker on, uh, it's because I've been uh, volunteering at the school, taking kids out into nature with Laura, uh, so pushing their uh, fear boundaries back, and uh, starting, uh, I think, at an early age is very important. Now, today, we have a very special guest with us uh, who's coming uh, to us from Denmark. And uh, of course, his accent will probably throw you because he's got a British accent. But uh, James Doyle is is a CEO of a company called Jamso, and he's got uh, a, a whole lot of really interesting perspective on the uh, business aspect of transcending fear, and uh, and has some uh, really good good questions. So I'm really looking forward to this interview. So uh, without further ado, welcome, James. So okay, uh, well we're we're green. <laughs> So what, uh, what did you what did you want to get into? Today? Yeah, I mean, obviously, what what I want to um, go through the company I have. It's not a massive company, it's, it's similar to yourself, sell sell standy as we would say in Danish, a self employed business a consultant, predominantly to small uh, companies. Yeah, um, that's the key uh, match. In addition to that, I've really got uh, three elements. One is about goals, goal setting. The other one is about metrics, so that's the data side. And then we've got about gamification. So this is about the motivation, making some fun out of uh, using game theory and the mechanics of that into uh, in, into both um, applying better analytics mm -hmm. and also making sure that there's, uh, if you're familiar with something as basic as like smart goal setting mm -hmm. uh, systems, um, people just follow a process and there's less motivation within it. So to try and gamify that or to try and incentivize the system so employees become more engaged. And that's pretty much, there's enough research out there to show that that's, uh, that's a crying need. Um, and so one of the things that I wanted specifically out from this was a, we both have a passion for a few things really that, mm -hmm. that I felt, uh, would be a real big, um, for me, a big interest, but also a huge crossover. Yeah. Uh, and the areas that I'm looking at really, um, is your book about transcend, transcending fear it's a massive message to massive organizations, mm -hmm. plus people who are thinking about starting a business, mm -hmm. plus people who are looking at change. So that's a very all encompassing unit. We've both got a passion for outdoors, both got a passion for skydiving. And, you know, I know you more than what you know me because I've been watching your videos. I've uh, been listening to you on the podcast. I think that's a guy they can really uh, offer a lot of interest, a lot of value out there. And in basically in the hope that that content can give something out to the, to my market. Mm -hmm. And hopefully then that'll attract for you to get a phone call for a, a meeting, for a, for a presentation, a keynote or whatever else, who knows what that could be. Sure. Um, sure. That's the intent. That's really mm -hmm. the, the, the crux of it. And mm -hmm. um you know, so so I, I wanted to, to kind of focus in in many ways with the um, with the the concept of transcending fear. Mm -hmm. What is it? Yeah. Some of the science and your research that you've done behind that, because yeah. um, that's quite a specialist gift that you have that you can offer some insights there. That I think an entrepreneur or a, a manager or as we'll see, technology is changing where you've got digitization of employment, yep. how are people gonna get over those fears of change? Mm -hmm. how, how can they embrace that, yeah? yeah. Um, and how do they recognize that what they think is frustration or resistance mm -hmm. is actually a fear, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and so that's, that, that's the thought process. Uh, I don't know if you feel that that's, uh, if that's a good match. Of course. Yes, of course. Yeah, the, the it's amazing how the, the it fear manages to pop its ugly head into so many different things and disguise itself so yes. effectively. Yeah. You know, I mean, anger in particular, as you say, frustration, but you know, it's it's grander forms, it's louder forms. Uh, that it, it seems to me that it, it fear shows its mark 
uh, if you if you strip away all of the illusions that it creates around itself, you know the ego doesn't want to admit that it's afraid. No, no nobody ever wants to admit it. Um, is that there isn't change. That's the indicator, right? If you if you have a topic where there is some sort of risk, whether it is perceptual, right, internal, or some tangible thing, I could get hurt, I could lose money, I could lose my career, I could lose my relationship. Um, all of these things are are real. I mean, even the stuff that's just internal, even if it's just a higher heart rate that creates a, a, a physical discomfort in the body, right? Either way, it's something that creates an aversion which means that you're not going to be making change. And if you're not making change in that area, you're not making improvement. Right. You're not making an increase in, in safety or an expansion of your earning power, or the expansion of your business, anything that you're um, experiencing some sort of fear in. Uh, that's the, the hallmark, isn't it? Uh, and so for me, the, the important message to, to start off with is that transcending fear does not mean being without fear. I don't know anybody uh, short of you know surgery on your amygdala, um, <laughs> you know, a brain surgery is going to allow you to experience that reality of zero fear. Yeah, and I've said it many times in many different ways that the, the brave people are simply folks that are not afraid of being afraid. Uh, in in the same way that that fit people are people who are not afraid of feeling the physical discomfort of exercise. That, and I think that for, for me, that's um, the interesting part because fear and motivation, hmm. in many ways, they're almost running parallel. Hmm. Right? It's just it's how the person reacts to the challenge. Sure. It could be a motivator or it can turn into an anxiety or yep. a fear reaction. Yep. It, how, what's how the characteristics from your perspective you that, that differentiates that? Yeah, well, I mean, of course, our history, right? Our life history and the habits that we create as a result create these, these uh, just natural tendencies when you receive a, the physical discomfort of fear. Um, do you shy away from it and then create an environment where you don't have to confront that specific thing, right? Yeah. Which is the most common response uh, to any challenge is to avoid the challenge. Yeah. Uh, and, and from there, I think we, it's important to expand beyond to, to say, well, what, what am I choosing? Right? So I, I have this experience of the aversion. I have the experience of the negative physiological aspects and the cognitive aspects that it, uh, it suggests in terms of, of uh, thought and action. Yeah. So then what? Right, and there has to be a game plan, and I think that's one of the biggest differences is those that have finally taken a closer look on a grander scale. What does fear do to me? Is it good or is it bad? Really, yeah. right? is it really is it actually somehow helping? Is it beneficial, or is it something that I just need to immediately have an instinct of distaste for the emotion, not self hatred, not embarrassment? Forgiveness for what I'm naturally feeling you know, you, this is just being alive. Uh, sometimes we get freaked out. But if you have a game plan for that experience and have a trigger thought, I'm going to take a deep breath and calm myself down and reappraise my initial conclusion. Right. So you're saying you, you've, you can identify through things like procrastination yep. is the avoidance process. So if you've got a, 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 as a, as a business person, as a budding entrepreneur, as a person who wants to, uh, to do something, it's always on the list, the list, the bucket list, the whatever list, yeah? And it doesn't quite ever get there. It doesn't ever quite become um, an event or there's an excuse because something else is more important. Mm -hmm. So you're saying um, it, to, does journaling help there? What what kind of Movement. what, what kind of systems would you would would you suggest that, that someone could analyze and review and say, well, okay, um, this is what I how I'm reacting, but also maybe as a as a leader as a manager, how can you share to other people and say, okay, how are you 
reacting to this new technology, to a new change or to a new skill or, or whatever it is. These are the key elements to, to consider. How, how would you suggest that someone should go about that? Well, I think journaling is a great idea, but now, of course, we've got many different forms of journaling, right? You can, you can do a, a, a video log that, a video blog that nobody ever sees, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. You can have a voice recorder that you just chat as you're in traffic or, or whatever. Scribbling on a, on a piece of paper is not the only way to journal. Uh, and some people relate, relate very well to having a pen in their hand and the, the tactile, tactile experience of that. Great. That's fine, but don't judge yourself. And one of the, the other things that we have to consider is that we often will need a mirror, another human being. Uh, that is going to be non-judgmental because of initial rules set up with this conversation. We're, we're, we're not going to be uh, assigning value one way or another. We're not going to have what we call in my business therapeutic aggression where we have an opinion that we're going to force upon others. We're just going to listen to each other and try to hold up a mirror and then say, you know, well, here's what I hear. Yeah, here's what I'm hearing from you. Uh, oftentimes, we've been justifying, bullshitting ourselves, basically, about yeah, yeah. why we're procrastinating, why we're, we're in a stagnation mode, and it's very obvious to anybody that's listening, but it's a story that we brainwashed ourselves with over and over and over through these repeated thoughts that I can't because of this, and I can't because of this, right? And we find ourselves stuck, full circle thinking ourselves into the same situation that we're in. So to, to have that mirror of another human being, it doesn't have to be a professional. It just it has to be somebody that loves us. That, yeah. That'd do. That'd do. It, it, is there, um, it, if you look at like uh, quality improvement systems, so you've got Deming and, and other greats out there. Um, if you look at plan, do, check, act as a, as a wheel of a process of improvement, as a process of performing and doing, um, one of the the points is you've touched on it the the cognitive biases yeah. of a person to um, as opposed to having the mirror, which is the critical thinking skills that are required yeah. to yeah. to use the two right mm -hmm. um, to say mm -hmm. okay are are these thoughts and opinions I have mm -hmm. how much based on fact and reality really are they and and so by encouraging to do more research to to uh challenge i guess uh the opinion that and and the thoughts yep. um they could well be validated uh but equally there could well be some opportunities and say well actually okay i was scared so now let's uh, let, let's get on with it no more excuses yeah yeah absolutely objectivity i think is the only place that sanity can find its way back into the egoic consciousness yeah, right? because it's the I, the self, the vulnerable, that can experience fear, right? The, yeah. the version of me that is bare attention of the world that that is not uh, not vulnerable in terms of ego blows and in the the self hatred that comes as a result of failure and all that stuff comes from me, me, me. And when I step out and above that, and I just observe the world without judgment of of myself then I'm able to, to really begin this process of transcending fear uh, in a, a much more powerful way than my ego ever could. And so I think this, we have to take a look at, you know, at where the fear is coming from and whether it's valid, right? Because yeah. there, may, there may be a reason why we're actually afraid that requires change, right? My right. gut is telling me, that I'm sitting by the door of an airplane getting ready to jump out and I've forgotten something, right? I forgot my yeah. parachute or I forgot to put my goggles on or my seatbelt's still yeah. attached to the aircraft. If my gut is talking to me in these uh, sublimative sort of ways where there is an emotional, physiological, emotional response that's occurring, that is my, my unconscious awareness. Yeah speaking in the only way that it can which is through my body something needs to change something's off i got to solve this problem that's fine that's great and that's to me that is not fear though that's a different kind of fear uh i, I to me that's caution that's that's yes. body wisdom you, there's a lot of different possible names but when it really 
becomes the problematic fear is when it's this on and on repeating process that I'm self-traumatizing, right? Where I'm yes. self, self-inducing this paralysis through these, these broken record repeating thought patterns that are not serving me anymore. Yeah. How, how do you identify the difference between anxiety and fear? Mm. In, in, from your perspective, what- I don't make a difference. Is, you don't, okay, to me, perfect. To me, scale. to me, it's a scale, right? right. So, so in the highest level, you have a heart attack. You know, you have screaming in panic. You have locking up and not being able to physically move when the building is on fire, you know, that sort of thing. And on the bottom end, I barely even notice it. Maybe I don't even notice that my behavior patterns have been changing. It's other people who know me, who are in the room with me, they know that I'm exuding anxiety, right? right. They feel that my, they notice my speech is faster. That yep. maybe the tone in my voice is different. The tells, as you would say in, a, in, in poker or something, right? My tells are, are probably, in most people, um, are not obvious to me. And so to me, that's the lowest level of anxiety. And this, this scale is, uh, you know, there's, there's big differences in how it feels. But it's, to me, it's part of the same system of my amygdala stoking the fire of the energy in my body leading me to the fight flight or freeze responses right okay so again that's that's something that everyone can connect to since they've been six months old <laughs> through to or possibly you know, possibly in utero right <laughs> yes yeah uh all the way through our lives there's no question about that um and that applies in business it applies to decisions um so again um you've referred earlier to saying okay you need to have a mirror there to um to to help identify those uh, points you're also saying accountability from your colleagues from your work friends to so say hey i've noticed you're reacting this way this you're a little bit quieter there is there something more we need to discuss here mm -hmm. um is that a summary of, of what you're saying? Are there other key elements that, uh, that are equally important to identify and look for? Well, self-awareness. I think that uh, the, the, it's an awfully large topic because most of us are not as aware of ourselves as we believe we are. <laughs> we, we all think that we're, we're sentient uh, in every possible way. And yet, uh, you know, we've got toilet paper hanging off of our shoe. In so many different ways, we've, we, have, we have things about us that others can see that we can't see. So, so I think it's important to always be able to, uh, to step out of the momentum of our thoughts where yeah. we lose ourselves in the plot, in the role that we play, or at least the role that we believe that we're playing, yeah. <laughs> which is not always congruent, uh, and, and be able to create the space, a moment where we stop and reappraise and ask good questions. And I think that's one of the most important things uh, in self-awareness is to ask ourselves good questions. What is my real motivation? What really is driving me? What am I afraid of? And what do I want? Yeah. You know, and beyond this, when I say, what do I want beyond ego, right? What does my, what does my organization need and want, right? I mean, yeah. to me, want, Want is two different, there's lower levels and higher levels of want. I want some ice cream, uh, but I need to make more money. We all do, right? We all need to, to grow, to, to give our, our dreams room to expand. We need financing. <laughs> and we yeah, yeah. Right? And that's and great. It, and it's also interesting. One of, one of the key things that I try to also share is your own goals, um, they may be apparently very different than the organization's goals, okay? Mm -hmm. However, by helping the organization hit theirs, that might secure your next year's pay rise, which helps you towards your goal. By encouraging and embracing some form of technological change, that might well um, improve a skill set which broadens your scope on the job market. So it's also uh, uh, about adapting a um, potentially perilous anxiety uh, fear situation and say, okay, 
from this situation how how can this be a win-win how can the organization win how can i win sometimes let's face it there's some short-term pain in and there is no benefit for the individual that's mm -hmm. also part of the game that's part of a reality right mm -hmm. and you can just notch that one in the in the uh, in the chalkboard of wisdom <laughs> and, and experience um but um what going right back to the book if you don't mind because i i think we've got a, a good grasp of um some of the uh the, the process steps which is fantastic um both in life and in business i think we've uh, been able to to cover that quite well for anybody who will uh, be be reading this and, and hearing this what about going back to the three factors and i'm reading off from here you <laughs> off from uh, some of your uh, some of your uh, writings about the sociological the psychological and physiological physiological uh, elements sure. Br briefly although there's a whole book's worth plus plus another book's worth that never made it in the book <laughs> more than one yeah. <laughs> exactly right what what factors um do you find are first of all maybe most common yeah but, but secondly um let's say the hardest to change or amongst the hardest to change and therefore what may need to be managed because you're the expert i don't know if you can ever totally conquer all fears but maybe there's a management of them yeah. and 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 uh, i mean my personal my personal experience is i'm petrified of snakes mm -hmm. but when i'm in nature mm -hmm. i i realize i hate the idea of snakes but i'm kind of curious when I see them, right? And I'll keep a very respectful distance from them. Yeah. For now. <laughs> well, and I think you're onto something great here because you don't necessarily need to be a snake lover. No. Perhaps you can be a snake appreciator to see the, yes. the beauty in another one of these natural creatures that's managed to survive uh, quite, a, quite a bit longer than humanity, right? Yes. Yeah. You, know, so you can appreciate how... Uh, their means of motility and their means of acquiring food and all this stuff and how do they stay alive in the winter and all that yeah. but is it is it necessary to make uh, make what we are most afraid of something that we have the greatest affinity affinity for not necessarily but we need to warm up to it so that we can examine the validity of our fears to be afraid of all snakes is not sane because most snakes are not poisonous. You're right. Right? To be concerned about an actual, you know, fertilance or some sort of, you know, snake that has toxic venom that if he gets you, he's, he's going to kill you. That is a very different story. But if you're afraid of the, the pattern recognition program of a rubber snake that catches the corner of your eye and you have the same, well, that's not completely sane, is it? And so to upgrade off of the initial software that, that was, you know, given to us in the, the operating system of our, our, our computer, right? What are the pattern recognition programs of, of arachnids, right? Of spiders, of all these other things, of, of eye contact, you know? There's a lot of things that human beings are given in our basic software package that were uh, sculpted through evolution, sculpted through a genetic hand-me-down process that may or may not be sane or rational, but they, they made sense when that uh, genetic structure and that mimetic structure that somehow gets passed down um, was, was put in the program in the same way that the, the memes of our society and the assumptions of our culture mm -hmm. create fears, right? The, yeah. the, the, the face value assumptions that we make about someone next to us on a train based on what they look like whether it causes a warmth or an aversion and a, or a downright yeah, yeah. fear or a downright move to the next train car behavior pattern where we could be moving away from an opportunity. Right. We so it's basically know your fear. Know right. your fear. Yeah. Examine your fear. Get yeah. close enough to it without yeah. rushing straight towards the edge of the cliff because there is real danger in this world. Yeah. Right? That's the trick. It's if we look to those three elements, the sociological, the physiological, and uh, the psychological, what, what are the three 
um, with, within those three uh, areas that influence fear, um, what, what what steps would you say people should be looking to to, to either manage or identify? What what's the key messages that you can share on those three? It all begins with phy- physiological, doesn't it? Right. I mean, we we assign these uh, circumstances whether whether it's a a sociological thing, right? A, a reason where we expect to become afraid due to a programming process through the telly, right? Through watching movies, from all of this stuff where we are we are just stimulus and response. We're, you know, single cell organism behavior patterns or, or something else. Either way, it, it's a physical re- response. And if we get carried away with the physical response, then we close down our options cognitively. Our ability to re-examine uh, the validity of something or the beneficiality of something so it gets eclipsed by the intense emotion. And so I think step one is always to, to do the things that de-escalate the emotion a little bit. And, right. you know, from, from that place of taking the deep breath and letting out slowly, you know, slowing down. I think that's the, the biggest message of all, slowing down, not just the breath, but the thought process, the actions, so that you have a little bit of slack in, in the system. It's reducing the RPM so that you can choose to change gears. Right. Right? It, 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 from, a, from a business perspective, could that be done in a way of, um, uh, you can never communicate enough. Just when you think you've communicated, do it again, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, is that also part of this? Is yep. that um, by again going back over again, it allows the cognitive process. It allows people at their own pace because everyone's slightly different. Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. Uh, to 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 uh, understand what they are in fear of better, so that they can understand their own reaction to it. Um, and then maybe start to make some uh, judgments on the other behaviors around them. To say, yes. well, actually, okay, well, well, Bob over there and Sheila over there, they they seem to be maybe not so bothered, so maybe I ought not to be as well. Yep. Is, that, is that something that you, you can it relate is. to? Is, is that also true? I think that the social aspects, it's extremely important because it, it can bump up our physical response, can it, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the trouble is we're not all the same. Right? In the way that we process adrenaline, the way that we process the world, some people are a lot cooler just naturally. And so others are very excitable. And the ones who prefer a cool environment are really annoyed by the people who tend to be excitable. And yet the truth is often handed to the social environment through the one person who is the canary in the coal mine, the, the loud uh, responder who has a physical response that is so intense that their voice gets louder. They right. get intense on, on the situation and on other people. And then you have this dichotomy of roles that keeps playing itself out, don't we? Where we have the angry alarmist and then the other person who invalidates anything they say because of the package in which the information was passed on. Right. Right. You're, you're ruining my buzz. I was having a nice coffee and you're freaking out about something. And the truth is what they're freaking out, freaking out about might be a really big deal. Right. And to invalidate that is, is going to create a, a weak point in, in the information gathering system that is an organization. And so I think that it's very important to, to honor and respect those who are connected to their bodies in a way where the emotion bubbles up like a volcano exploding. And that, that group of people need to notice within themselves how they're doing it and temper their temper. <laughs> right? So there's we, a meeting we, we, in the middle. Seen those. It's yeah. a, you know what I mean? There's a meeting in the middle where the people who tend to be physically hotter Take the deep breath and calm down and consider that the other person's emotional response to the way that they're passing on the information matters in terms of the effectiveness of their passing on of information, right? What you're freaked out about, what you're angry about or afraid about 
might be valid, but if you don't create the behavioral change that you're looking for to create a greater level of safety or the improvement that's necessary, well, what's the point of saying anything at all? You might as well just lock yourself in the bathroom and scream. Yeah. <laughs> right? Which <laughs> might be the best choice sometimes to, you know, to go out in the nature and scream at the top of your lungs and calm down and get the emotional edge off and then come back into the situation with skillful means, right? It's one of the most important things I've ever heard, the idea of being able to pass on information with skillful means so that you're not flaring up the other's egos, so that yeah. you're not flaring up their pattern recognition programs of when in doubt, ignore the screaming person. Because screaming is against the rules, right? Emotion is against the rules. Well, that's not sane either. <laughs> that's not leading us no. towards the most of, so this is, this is high level, high intensity, emotional intelligence that we're talking about here. And it's Definitely. the rules that we play, the, the top, you know, the top working its way down and the bottom working its way up so we can meet in the middle and create a teamwork framework. Yep that is exciting and fun and we're playing different roles, right? Some people are rowing the boat and others are standing up on top of the crow's nest, deciding where to row and barking, you know, the, the cadence. We all have our roles to play at each different moment. We may be reversing roles, but to honor each other's roles yeah. is yeah. very important. Yeah, I, I, and that, that's also, uh, it goes right back to what you said earlier, you know, everyone is different. Um, what, what I'm hearing from what you're saying, if, if as an example, um, there is going to be a rollout of a new change within an organization, um, you need to respect the, uh, the, the character types uh, within, the, uh, within, within the business, mm -hmm. allow for a bit of an expect, uh, a bit of hot-headed discussion. Mm -hmm. um, allow people also to have to take time away, let them shout off in the nature or maybe down the pub <laughs> or <laughs> to the family or whatever it is in the car park or whatever, and then come back the next day, reinform. And then, um, am I hearing then from you to actually to say, okay, with good guidance, with some critical discussion, with some, uh, uh, and, and I meant that in, not in an, a negative manner but mm -hmm. from the critical thinking uh, from an objective uh, perspective to then uh, guide through and say okay well what 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 does this mean to you as an individual how can we help this situation for you this is what we think what do you feel do you see the same what what else do we need to understand yeah. is that roughly a summary of, uh, of of the process i think that's great yeah. Yeah. The, the ability for an organization, large or small, to be responsive, right? To, to be intelligent, you know, to, to take the microcosm of the human brain when the alarms are going off and the amygdala and the old reptilian brain is taking over and the fight, flight, and freeze behavior patterns start to become natural. Yeah. The prefrontal cortex, right? The higher cognitive functioning, the ability to envision beyond the given data, to be creative in, in solution setting, uh, to, to find new ways beyond what's happened in the past, an organization needs to, to, uh, to think with a higher mind, to, right. to take a higher road. And, often, yeah. and oftentimes, what appears to be an impasse between us is this higher road that neither one of us has walked before. And so we have to get beyond our emotions, honor our emotions, recognize that other people have different kinds of emotions, different ways of processing, and not come together in dissonance, but to, to sort of keep enough space when there is high intensity emotions to let people do what they're doing, let them work their way out until they're calm enough that we can synchronize and work together to work as a team because we do have a superordinate goal of kicking butt together. It's, exactly. it's fun. It's fun yes. to find a way with, with the multitude of, of personality types uh, that are all necessary, right? I mean, when we, yeah. when we launched, and launched people to the moon and they walked around and picked up rocks and brought them back, it wasn't just uh, the, the science and engineering types that, that got us there. It was all types of human beings working together. And exactly. not, it's not an easy thing to do. And yet I think that's the, the best thing that, that humans can do. It, that, that's a perfect analogy for, for another uh, qu question I wanted to ask was 
Um, part of the, um, uh, the, the hurdle with fear um, of the challenge of addressing fear, we come from a background of a sport within skydiving where visualization is used yeah. um, quite, quite, uh, quite well and very successfully. Uh, the moonshot is a classic business um, uh, goal-setting phrase. You've just referred to landing on the moon, and you know no one knew really what that could yeah. be like at first. But at some point, they had to visualize that so that mm -hmm. the um, what was a technological challenge became knowledge and therefore fear for the engineering, fear for the astronauts themselves, mm -hmm. fear for the whole support systems was then um, satisfied effectively. And what I mean by satisfied is that they became fully aware what are the real risks. Yep. It's dangerous on the moon, right? <laughs> But, but it's not, it's not, yeah, the danger is not infinite, right? In any given situation, there's not an infinite number of variables that you have to contend with. You're not going to be dealing with lava balls getting launched through the sky at you while you're walking around on the moon. That's okay, one less thing. What yeah. about alien creatures? Yeah. No, not on the moon. You know, it's a dead rock. Okay, what else can I set my mind to use and focus in on the real risk? What are these specific things? And I might have to go to great lengths to mitigate those things, to, to create safe, safety protocols and, and, and objects, you know, that I'm taking with me. They're going to create a higher level of safety. But, but I have to, to, to bring in a, that's a very special kind of sanity, yeah. which comes from isolating variables and addressing them one by one. And that's not fear-based thinking, right? It might be fear that raised the red flag you know, that I feel an emotional thing. Okay, well, why do you feel the emotional thing? Let's get specific. Let's isolate and control those variables. Question with, um, there's a huge field of thought about positive thinking, okay? Mm -hmm. Utilization of affirmation, self-talk, a, a whole bunch of tools that you're far more of an expert than what I could ever be. Um, when, when that's applied to... Um, uh, to tackling fear, yeah. at what point can that actually be dangerous? At what point that can mm. that be mm. delusional? Mm. What, at what point can that provide uh, the wrong level of confidence? How, yeah. how is that managed? How would mm. you suggest that that's looked into? I, I find that as long as I'm in touch with my gut, with, with my physical sensations in my body, if I keep constructing a... Uh, a visualization, an elaborate visualization in which I do succeed, right? A plausible success story about a possible future. As long as I can see through that step by step without getting the crunch in my body, well, chances are this is a sane possibility. It may not be an easy possibility. It might require uh, effort and steps and training and behavior, you know, beyond what I've done in the past and, and elements of, of tools that yeah. I don't have yet, right? But if I can go through that process without getting the crunch, the physical crunch, and people say, well, yeah, but my gut doesn't seem to work. I've tried. And, and I am scared all the time about every possibility. Whenever I try to envision dangerous things, physical or business-wise, whatever, my conclusion is just go work for somebody else. It's too scary to be an entrepreneur. Go, you know, don't, don't base jump off of a cliff because I can't picture myself doing it successfully. And I say, well, you've got to start from a basic uh, story of, of happiness. You have to start from a basic uh, life uh, belief system where you get up in the morning and you're thankful and you're happy and that happiness, that background of normal happy, right? Creates a, a system where your, your contrasts show up. But if somebody is always negative, if they're always the yeah, but person, here's why we can't, here's how, here's why we, we shouldn't try. If that's the role that you play, it's habituating, right? It becomes a normal negative. 
And now you're right. Your emotional guidance system will be a failure. <laughs> it's not going to work because if, if you're suffering from miserable bastard syndrome, how do you know when you're, you know, everything's a catastrophe for you. <laughs> how do you get over that? How does somebody uh, flip that, uh, that bridge from um, see, <laughs> yeah. from being from, um, I, I'll give you one example. Um, I've, I've never forgotten this. I was probably about 17, 18 years old. And I worked for an old uh, diesel engine company in the West Country in the UK. Uh, no engineering company similar to it for many, many miles. A guy had worked there for probably 30, 40 years, all of his life. The department he worked in was called heat treatment. It was an engineering area highly specialist yeah, yeah. metallurgist skills off the scales for for um for what was required there but lived in the area and and had loved uh, loved the job with a passion decision okay we're outsourcing yeah so suddenly the guy's 55 58 uh i walked in saw the guy literally literally crying yeah and heartbroken everything else Mm. And he was a very um, pessimistic figure to be around for yes. the the rest of my duration whilst I was there uh, around him. Mm. Question to you in that situation, because there's there's also maybe the difference between fear and reality, <laughs> mm. <laughs> right? Um, how how through fear? can you address that kind of mentality? How through fear can you, or the processes of managing fear, can you actually um, ta tackle such very real, realistic um, <clears throat> career realities for, for many individuals and indeed entrepreneurs that, you know, business doesn't work out. So on the plan B, mm -hmm. how, how do you, how would you suggest that someone looks into that? Well, I think the, the first step, I know the first step is acceptance, right? To accept the truth of what has occurred, right? Uh, and that doesn't mean that you're accepting fate beyond this point. From this point forward, now I've got control, right? And my response is changing my future. And this is where the positive thinking, if you will, takes takes on, right? You can change the way you feel about the past, sure, but if you don't accept it, you're not going to, you know, I feel great about the fact that I went bankrupt. I'm just going to repeat that in my head until I feel great about it. Well, that's called bullshitting yourself. And you won't be able to swallow that pill no matter how many times you say it. So you might as well just accept how you really feel right. and, and not, not hate yourself for it and bring in forgiveness. Yeah. Right. And so there has to be first that acceptance of, of the quote reality of what occurred. And then the forgiveness of, you know, the, the fact that I, there were certain matters that were beyond my control. Yeah, exactly. I, I did what I could do. Maybe I could have done better and maybe I will do better. Now that I have this knowledge, this, this contrast based learning. Yeah. Right. And so I'm going to therefore launch a new vision, but I'm not going to assign an expectation of negativity just because the past has some failures in it. Right. You got, you got to have a, a sort of a short memory of your past failures if you're going to be a success in high-risk environments. Yeah. You have to be, some would, would call it delusional, but you have to, to believe that you're, the effect of your positive attitude is greater than anything else. There needs to be action. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There needs one, to be one question. One, yeah, one question there, Brian, um, yes, from, your own, per, from your own personal experience, because your background within skydiving, you know, I'm looking at a rigorous machine, a sewing machine behind you. <laughs> that for people there's, who are not there's another first, one here. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> for another people one. Who, <laughs> yeah. For people who are not aware of what that is. Um, yeah, that's, I think, uh, uh, it, yeah, it, no it, yeah. It's it's a it's equipment uh, that is done to the highest safety standards. Yep. Um which of course uh, Brian needs to look uh, in the mirror uh, at the end of every stitch my guess to understand this is this is a stitch that's going to hold somebody's uh, life. <laughs> it's right. quite literally someone's life. How do you overcome 
that fear mm. of that level of responsibility that you have. I don't how, dwell. How, I, don't, I don't dwell on the fear aspect. I I notice it when if it comes in an, in a flash moment of awareness yeah. that I care. That's instead of right, I I wear that as. That's is great. I I actually care about the the outcome of my efforts. Yeah. I'm going to lead that to reinvest my attention in the details. My uh, my ability to step back and examine what I've done as if someone else is doing the inspecting as if as if someone else did the work to step back and if I don't like what I see, I'm just going to redo it. Right. Until it's right. And it's not about wanting to be uh, done so that I can leave. I want to do a job well. And, yeah. and in this case, it's, it's my meaning underneath all of it that, that motivates me. And none of this is about fear. It, if I dwell on the thoughts of the negative visualization of what would happen if I failed, right? What if I did a bad job and somebody died, right? Because yeah. that's, it's a real possibility for somebody who doesn't have as high a level of care as I do. Right. But I actually love skydivers. Yeah. And for, for me, that, that love becomes an investment in my inten- attention in the detail work. Yeah. yeah. And my ego sort of dissolves from the situation. And I just say, let's just do the job right. If it takes me, I mean, there's times where I actually am back stepping, unpicking stitches for, you know, five or six hours in the process of building one parachute. I'm going backward to go forward and whatever, what's the difference in the end is a product that I'm proud of a product that I will see 10 or in some cases 20 years down the road. I've got parachutes that I still jump that I made 20 years ago where I inspect them again. I go, no, they're they're fine and I'll keep on jumping them. It feels good. Yeah. And, And for me, it's not an ego thing and it's not a fear driven thing. Uh, it's the the positive spin on pride. It's it's the feeling good about being part of something that is really special, right? And it, there's massive elements within that personal story there yep. that help help someone uh, take their own approach to addressing um, a fear type situation um, or or a challenge type situation. How they personally bring that care that accountability, that responsibility, Mm -hmm. that awareness, those skills, all of that in together. So, well, hang on, I've got such a big toolkit here Mm -hmm. that, that, that it will just come good. Right. And, Mm -hmm. and I think that's, that's also what I'm hearing uh, from Mm -hmm. a process side, but Brian, I'm very conscious of time. Mm -hmm. um, And and just to, to, to ask a few other quick questions, if you don't mind, but you, Mm -hmm you've got one of the most, if not the most impressive, um, in fact, I, I say you are the go-to parachute uh, safety guy, full stop, period. On Online, there's no one else out there that is doing mm-hmm. such a good job as what you do for, um, That's awesome. for, for, for that. And you're supporting uh, various media sources out there, and I would recommend anyone and everyone uh, not just to listen to it because it's fascinating and informative, but I think that care and that passion that you've just described also comes through in your explanations, the depth of your knowledge. And also what I really appreciate about it is, is when uh, you're able to bring so many different angles and perspectives through your experience of what somebody else with a slightly less experience, with slightly more experience, might be thinking what they also need to be considering. From that, um, all those great skills you also bring to the public uh, speaking world, yeah? And you're out there, uh, also a fantastic um, uh, speech that I've been sharing out on social media and continue to do that again, uh, which is is very great for uh, for, for com- companies out there. What from your perspective, what are the, what key areas do you think um, you would like to leave for an entrepreneur, for a large organization to say, hey, here's what I'm about. Um, here's maybe what I can offer. And here's where to find me. Yeah. How would you approach that? Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I think the most important thing is that, that people decide on an inspiration-based thought process. An inspiration-based uh, career, in the end, you'll have fewer regrets, won't you? Yeah. And that's, to me, that's, that's the worst fail that we have available to us. That, that if we look back on our lives and, and regret that we didn't take chances on the ideas that mattered to us personally. Is it the idea that's going to change the world and save the world? I don't know. That's up to you. But the one that you assign meaning to is the one that you're going to have the most bravery for once you begin the process of bearing the soft white underbelly of your caring, right? But yeah. if you keep it hidden, right? If you, if you keep quiet about these ideas and you don't move forward into that risky zone that may require, you know, a little, uh, you know, finagling and modifying and, and, and learning, right? Expansion of your own skill set. Uh, it, it is possible that you're going to run into all kinds of, of apparent failures along the way. Uh, but what are you here for, right? Are you here, are you here to just be born and live and then die? and hopefully pass on something to the future generation if you happen to breed? Or are you here to create meaning through your own belief systems and move forward with it, despite the fact that there is danger for you? Uh, that, to me, this is the whole point of, of all of this stuff, whether it is uh, dealing with fear uh, in a physical way or otherwise, to, to choose courage for, for a reason. I mean, going, going back to the, the moon reference earlier, I mean, one of the best examples most people can see today is, you know, you've got, uh, you, you've got um, uh, the automotive sector uh, stuck in the older uh, internal combustion engine, and you've got Tesla reaping the market through new innovative ideas, and now the automotive sector are now taking that on. Um, so, so they can learn an awful lot there from you. Uh, that, that's for sure. Um, Brian, we'll uh, make sure that loads and loads of links are uh, put out there and uh, so people can contact you. And, um, you know, massive, massive thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Yeah, well, you know, you can, uh, you're can. you welcome to check out. We've got a video channel on YouTube uh, under my name, Brian Germain. Uh, we've got a really neat website, Adventure Wisdom, which uh, for those that are learning to skydive, we'll find that's very interesting. Uh, transcendingfear.com has a lot of good stuff if you're uh, looking to, to move forward into those dark and scary zones in your life to create uh, light, right? To create expansion, to create a larger version of you. It's, it's worthwhile. It's worth the journey. And, and I invite, invite all of our viewers here to, to step it up, to step up your courage uh, to, to nurture uh, a larger version of you. Definitely. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Brian. Really yeah. appreciate it. It'd be of big value. Thank you. Yes, indeed.